Hi everyone, I'm Raghav from the YouTube channel Shutter Authority. Today I'm going to show you how to create this dinosaur, a Brachiosaurus, from scratch in Blender 2.9. The sculpting tools in the newer versions of Blender have gotten really good and here are some of the other creatures I've done in the past with the same workflow. In Blender you can sculpt, you can retopologize, texture paint, it should be a lot of fun so let's go ahead and get started. The first step is to create a base mesh and we're going to use the skin modifier. Then we use Dine Topo to give it the basic shape. After that we retopologize with quadri mesher. Then we UV unwrap the mesh, sculpting details with multi-res. Then we sculpt with alpha brushes. And then we bake the maps and finally we texture paint. Okay, now let's model the base mesh. We start with the default scene in Blender. We delete the light and camera. I have a reference image of the dinosaur that I want to bring into Blender. So I just drag it in and then press G and move it down to place it on the floor. Now we're going to rotate the view a little bit and push the plane a little bit back to make space for the sculpting process. Now I select the cube and get in edit mode by pressing tab. Then I press A to select all the vertices and then under mesh, merge at center. This just leaves us with one point which I can grab by pressing G and place it roughly where the pelvis would be. Then I'm going to press E and extrude it along the spine and then up the neck. Then I grab one of the points on the neck and start extruding again towards the jaw. Now I do the same thing with the pelvis and just extrude down the tail. Same thing again, extrude and make the leg. Same thing with the chest, just extrude a bunch of times and now you rotate the view and select the vertices that make up the leg and move it a little bit over to the left. We can get it a front view by pressing 1 on the number pad and make sure that it's wide enough. Now that that's done, we can get out of edit mode and then go to the wrench icon, pick the mirror modifier. That creates the legs on the other side as well. Next we're going to apply the skin modifier and after that we'll add a subdivision surface. This sort of smooths it and adds more faces to it we can increase the level to 2. Now let's get into the right orthographic view by pressing 3 number pad and turn on the wireframe mode. Here we can select the vertices and press Control A to scale them down. This sort of makes the whole thing shrink a little bit. So you can select different vertices and just make sure that it lines up with the reference image that you have in the background. You just go over all of the different vertices and sort of scale them and position them. Sometimes you can run into little errors or glitches like that. But if you sort of play with the scale and position, there's going to be a point where it looks okay. At this stage, it's not very important that it has to be perfect or anything like that. You're just trying to get the rough shape of the creature because you're going to adjust these things anyways in the next part. Now I'm just going to go ahead and do that to all of the other ones. Now we get in a solid view and turn on the x-ray so you can see through it and sort of you can turn around and make sure that things are the right size. As always you're just pressing Control A and scaling it down and then G to reposition the vertices in the right place. Now come out of x-ray mode. Okay, that's looking pretty good. When we're looking at it from the front view, we're actually facing the back side. So I want to rotate it 180 degrees. So I press R, Z, 180. And under object, I can apply rotation. I can do the same thing for the reference image. R, Z, 180. Now I'm going to go to the side view and press G to move it and line it up with the background image. This seems like a good time to save. Sculpting with dynamic topology. I'll start by applying all the modifiers, the mirror, the skin modifier and the subdivision surface. I'll turn on the background image, select the model and get into the sculpting layout. Here I'm going to turn on Dine Topo on the right side and change it to constant detail. I turn on the x-ray mode again and we're going to grab the snake hook brush 
and I can increase the size of the brush by pressing F and moving the mouse. Let's increase the resolution to about 20 and then we can start pulling and pushing so that everything lines up perfectly with the background image. So here I'm just using the snake hook brush and pushing and pulling it until it sort of lines up with the background image. I'm going to be in the side view the whole time. Once you've got the rough shape down, you can come out of the side view and then start adjusting it from the front view and just from all other angles just to get it into the right shape. I'm doing all of this with the snake hook brush with the dine topo turned on. If you hold down shift, every brush turns into the smooth brush. So you can go over all the parts and smooth it over. We also need to go to the underside and smooth all these tight regions. So you could be in any brush, just hold shift and start drawing. I noticed that the legs are curving outwards, so I'm going to use the pose brush to reshape it. For this, you might want to have a fairly huge brush size. So press F and move your cursor until it's really big. Then I just go over it again, smooth everything out. I'm also using the draw brush to fill things out a bit. At this stage, I frequently switch between draw brush, snake hook, sometimes even grab, depending on the exact thing I'm trying to do. The face is finally starting to get its shape. So now I start using the draw brush again to fill in the cheeks and the jaws. Now that the overall shape is closer to the final result, I prefer to use the grab brush more than the snake hook because all I'm doing is slight changes and pushes and the grab brush seems to work better for that. I switch back to the draw brush to add a little bit of the loose skin that you see on the underside. I also use the inflate brush when I want to make a certain part a little bit bigger. Now I reshape the leg a little bit. Just going over each joint, and here I'm trying to make the foot be flat on the ground. While doing all of this, it's very important to constantly look at reference images. So I have a lot of them set up in my second monitor, which I'm constantly looking at when I'm sculpting a creature. My anatomical knowledge is very limited. So I'm just having to look at the reference images all the time. And, and I just try to bring it as close to that as possible. Now I'm starting to sculpt large wrinkles and I like to use the draw brush for this. Now I'm using the crease brush to add some folds and creases in all of these tight spaces. At this point, you don't want to add too much detail either. You want to have only the larger details at this level. Now we're going to sculpt some detail on the foot. So I choose the mask brush and I draw where I want the nails or the hooves to be. Now on the top left menu, go into mask and invert it. Now if you sculpt using the draw brush in that part, it's going to come out like nails. Now I can invert the mask once again and hold down alt and sculpt with the draw brush to push it inside a bit. Now you can go back into the mask menu and clear the mask. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing for the back foot. I'll just fast forward this part. Okay, that's it for Dine Topo Sculpting. Now let's retopologize with Quad Remesh. Once you download the add-on, go into Edit, Preferences, Add-ons and install it. If you press N, it brings up the menu with the add-on. I want my retopologized mesh to have about 20,000 polygons. So I'm going to enter 20,000, Symmetry X and Remesh it. There you go. That's how quick it is. Look how dense and bad the topology is with DynaMesh and QuadraMesh makes it like super clean. I want to have a little more detail on the face. So we need more faces. So I'm going to go into side view, turn on X-ray mode and I'll just box select a bunch of faces on the face. Now I turn off X-ray mode, right click and subdivide. 
there is a little bit of cleanup required so I'm going to add the shrink wrap modifier select the base as a target change that to project and set it to negative yep that cleaned it up so we can apply the modifier and then I right click and shade smooth it's now time for UV unwrapping get into the UV editing layout press 2 to get into the edge select mode now you can alt left click to select the entire loop now you can right click and select mark seam now you go over the rest of the model and look for areas where you can add loop like one around the neck so you right click and mark seam let's make a little bit more space when you alt click on certain edges it's not going to find a loop so in such cases you want to find something that is going around all the way around the leg or something like that so you alt click on the edge and once the loop is selected you can hold shift and do it to the other side right click and mark seam so let's do that to the hind legs as well select the loops right click mark seam we'll do that to the tail and for the base of the foot do that for the hind legs as well alt click on the edges right click mark seam i'm gonna go ahead and do it to the rest of the objects one important thing to note is that when you have two loops marked as seams you want to have a straight line connecting them ultimately you should be able to unwrap it without running into any serious stretching problem if there are things that you mark as seams and you want to get rid of them you can select the edges again right click and clear seam I'm going to have one seam going around its mouth. Don't worry about doing a very accurate job. Since you're going to be hand painting it, it's not crucial that it is 100% perfect. If there are seams that you want to get rid of, select them and clear them. If you want to select a long line of edges like that, what you could do is just select one end and then hold control and select the other end and then right click and clear seam. Whenever you have a part that is a little bit like a cylinder, you want to have one long seam going lengthways. Do the same for the other leg. You could actually speed this process up by cutting your model in half and then UV unwrapping only on one side and then using a mirror modifier to do it on the other side as well. There is one issue around the neck that I would like to fix. We have a series of five-sided faces called N-Gons and these can cause problems when you're baking normal maps. So you select them using the lasso tool and then go into face and then triangulate faces. So this turns all of them into triangles. Then you can turn them back into quads. So what it does is some of them are quads and the rest of them are triangles and that should fix it. Now that we've done all the same, you can select all by pressing A, U and unwrap. And your UVs should look something like this. Some of them are a little bit small, so you can select them by pressing L. You have to be in face select mode and then you can rearrange them. So I'm going to select all these small ones by pressing L and then I'll move them away to the bottom. So that gives me a little bit more space for the ones for the head that are here. So I said press L and then G to move them. I can also rotate them by pressing R, 90 and then S to scale it. Okay, that should be it. Sculpting details with multi-res. Select the low poly model and apply the multi-res modifier. Then you can subdivide it a couple of times. Keep an eye on the number of faces. For a character like this, I would have about 5 to 10 million faces. I think 4 levels of subdivisions is enough. That's about 5.4 million faces. Now we get into the sculpting layout and use the crease brush to add a little bit of detail around the joints. As I mentioned earlier, you can press F and move the mouse to change the size of the brush. If you hold down control while sculpting with a brush, it's going to invert the effect. So the creases come outwards instead of going inwards. As I said earlier, it's very important to have a lot of reference images when sculpting detail. So you can constantly look at it and then do exactly the same in your model.
Here I'm using the inflate brush to add thick folds of skin and wrinkles. I'm just frequently switching between inflate, draw and crease. So I'm going to fast forward this portion a bit. You might notice we still haven't done the teeth. So I'm going to create a cylinder and then reduce the vertices to six and then get into edit mode and scale it down. Then I press three to get into face select mode and select the top face and scale it down. Now I'm going to press control R and scroll the mouse to add two new loops. I'll get out of edit mode and add a subdivision surface modifier on it. And then you right click and shade smooth. Now we get into the sculpting layout and press the period key on the number pad to zoom into the tooth. And then I'll use the grab brush to give it a little bit of shape. So I reduce the width and also move the middle to one side to give it a little bit of direction. Now we need to make UV maps for the tooth. So we go to the UV editing layout, select the top and bottom faces of the cylinder and scale them down and put them to the corner. Now I select all the side faces and scale them up on the Y axis and position them a little bit in the center. We're back in the 3D layout and I'm going to go into edit mode and select all the faces and I move them up so that the pivot is at the base of it. Now I go into the side view and move the tooth to its mouth. Now I'm going to rotate and scale the tooth and position it inside the mouth. Back in side view, I can press shift D and duplicate the tooth. Now I duplicate them a bunch of times and make a lot of teeth. Then I place them where they should be. Once you've made all the teeth you need, you select them all and press Ctrl J. That will join it into one object. Then you can go to modifier and add the mirror modifier. And for the mirror objects, select the low poly model. So now you've created teeth on both sides. Now I duplicate the whole thing, rotate it to be horizontal, and then I press S, Z, minus one to flip it around. Then I rotate it again and place it on the upper jaw. Now I can get back into edit mode and reposition them and even make clones of teeth if I need more. Now to make the eyes, I'm gonna create a UV sphere. I'll set the segments to 16 because we don't need too many faces there and I'll scale it down and place it in the eye socket. Right click it and shade smooth. Now we'll go into the UV editing layout. We'll press the period key to zoom in on it. Select all the faces, press U and then project from U. Then we can scale the faces a little bit in the UV layout. Now let's add the mirror modifier on the eyeball to have it show up on the other side. Now let's select the multi res object and then get back into the sculpting mode. We'll start adding detail now. I'm using the inflate brush, but I'm holding down control so it reverses the brush. To make little holes, so I'm going to use the draw brush by holding control and then I can use the inflate brush to give it a little bit of an edge. I'm also going to use the inflate brush to add a little bit of a jawline and also make a bunch of wrinkles around its neck. When you're sculpting wrinkles, try to make them look a little bit random. So some of them are bigger and thicker than the others and you just sort of go over the whole model and, and when you're looking at reference images, you automatically know where the wrinkles should be. Now we're going to add some micro detail with alpha brushes. We're going to create a new brush by pressing this button and I'll drag open a new window and go to the texture tab and press open. These are some of the alpha brushes that I have downloaded from the Pixologic website. I'm going to start with this one with the wrinkles. So we change the mapping from tiled to area plane. And then under stroke, we change it to anchored. So now we can reduce the strength and start pulling out. Just make sure that it rotated to be in the right way because it's important to have the wrinkles going the right direction. Now you just have to go all around the model adding these wrinkles. Just make sure that it doesn't overlap too much. This can take a while. So I'm going to fast forward this portion a bit. When you're adding details like these, look at reference images and see if you can match the direction of the wrinkles because at each part it's going to be different and even the size of the wrinkles and for the ones at the bottom and top you want to disable symmetry otherwise you're going to be able to see that it is mirrored. I'm going to change my alpha brush to a different one and use that to get some detail on the nail.
Another thing that I like to do is adding little bumps. So I'm using the inflate brush without any alpha brushes. I just go around the model. You can also use the draw brush, but just make sure it looks random. One thing I had forgotten was to make the tongue. So I'm going to create a new cube, get into edit mode and scale it down. Press control five to add a subdivision surface of level two. And then I'm going to move it and place it inside the mouth and scale it down. When you're changing the scale, make sure you're in edit mode. I'll scale it on the Y axis and then I'll rotate it. Next, we go into sculpt node and turn on dine topo. Then I can take the snake hook brush and shape it like a tongue. You can press forward slash to isolate the object. I'm pulling it around using the snake hook brush. Now I don't have symmetry turned on, so I just turn it on and now whatever I do, it will mirror it on both sides. Okay, and that's looking pretty good. We get back into the 3D layout. Now we can go to the quad measure and then set it to be about 1000 faces and then remesh it. You can right click and shade smooth. Now we select the tongue and go into the UV layout. Here we're going to create one seam. So we go into edge select by pressing two and then select one loop of edges that is going all around. Then you can right click and mark seam. And then we can select all by pressing A, press U and unwrap. Switch to face select mode and then press L and move them over just to give it a little bit more space. Okay, now let's bake the normal and cavity maps. Select your multi res object and set the viewport level to zero. Go into the UV editing layout, create a new texture map by pressing new. Call it normal map and set the resolution to be 4096 by 4096. You can uncheck alpha because you don't need it and then press OK. In the shader editor, you can press Shift A, S and search for image texture. Now select the normal map that you just created. Set the color space to non-color. Now go into the render tab and switch to cycles. Now scroll down to the bake section and under bake, select bake from multi res and then you can select your model and the texture and then press bake. There you go. You have your normal map. So basically what you've done is you've transferred all of that sculpted detail onto an image. Now you can go under image and save it out. A normal map like this will make your low poly models look almost exactly like your high poly model. You can plug the color into the normal map slot and then normal into the normal. If you go into look dev mode and make the base color a little bit darker, you can see that all of that detail is now visible, but this is the low poly model. This just has 25,000 faces but it looks exactly like the multi-res model that had 5 million faces. We could get a little bit more detail on the base mesh, so we can go to the multi-res modifier, go back to the highest subdivision level of 4, and under shape, press apply base. Now if you go back to the subdivision level of 0, you're gonna see that it has been reshaped, and this adds a little bit more detail on the low poly model. But now we have a few shading issues, so we're gonna go into edit mode, select all by pressing A, and under mesh, clean up, make planar faces. This flattens all the quads which had vertices which were not in one plane. So you can bake the normal maps once again, it's gonna look slightly different because the base mesh has been reshaped, but you can choose which one you like better. Go ahead and save it out. Now let's make a cavity map. I'm going to make a copy of my multi-res object and rename it to multi-res and switch to the highest level of subdivisions, which is four. So this is going to be your high poly object. And on the other one, you're going to have it set to zero. Now let's create a new material for the high poly object. So press new and name the material HP material. Now I'm going to press shift A and create a new geometry node. Now add in a color ramp and plug the pointiness into the factor and the color into the base color. Now I'm going to go into the environment tab and add an HDRI environment into the color slot. And now if you go to the rendered view, you'll start to see what this geometry node is doing. So if you bring up the black point to about 0.4 and the white point to about 0.5, you see that all the little crevices turn black and the rest of it stays light. I'm going to go with 0.44 and 0.55. Go into the bake settings under render tab and set an extrusion value of 0.1. Now you select the low poly, turn it on and create a new map and call it cavity and set the resolution to be 4096 by 4096, uncheck alpha and press OK. Now you select the map in the image texture node and select the high poly model and press bake. This can take a few minutes to bake, but once it's done, you should have something that looks like this. Using a cavity map, you can add in a lot of detail when you're painting the textures. Finally, we paint the textures. 
Go into the texture paint layout and press the plus button to create a new texture for the base color. Uncheck alpha and select a color that roughly represents the overall color of the creature. I'm looking for a grayish brown color and this map can actually be at 1K resolution. Press OK to create it. Now let's look at the material setup for texture painting. I'm going to create a new mix RGB node and I'll put it in between the base color and the BSDF node. I'll change the operation from mix to overlay. Now I'll create a color ramp node. Let's make a little bit more space here. Now I'll plug the cavity map into the factor and plug the color into the lower slot of the overlay. This has also changed the color space to non-color data on the cavity map. Now, if you move the black point, you can see that it's mixing the detail in the cavity map with the base color map that you just created. I'm going to bring the black point to about 0.7 and the white point to about 0.9. I'm also going to increase the roughness of the material to about 0.6 and we can reduce the specular value to about 0.2 so that it is not so shiny. Under the draw tab on the right, I'm going to go to color palette and create a new one. Then I can select a color by pressing S to sample it and then press the plus button to add it to the palette. I'm going to add a few more colors like a dark one, some light, some a little bit of red and then we're good to start painting. The only things you want to really control here are the strength of the brush and the radius. You can change the radius by pressing F, same as in sculpting. So I'm painting this lighter shade of brown on the front and on the underside. As I have been saying in every other step, I'm looking at reference images to see what the color patterns are like. I choose a darker color and make it sort of dark around the eyes. And wherever there's a huge crease or fold, there's going to be some dark pigmentation. So I'm going to just go and brush a little bit of black on all of these parts. I'm also going to make all these little bumps and warts sort of darkish. Now let's look at using a texture mask to add in a little more detail. Pull up a new tab and go to the textures tab. On the left side, press the copy button to make a new brush and call it mask. And now on the right side, press the new button and select clouds. You can scroll down and change the contrast and brightness and see what it looks like. You can also try out different scale values and go with the one that looks the best. Now I'll paint a little bit of dark color with the texture mask. Try out a few things, adjust the strength and keep on painting. As you're painting, you're going to make a lot of mistakes and to correct it, what you can do is you can press S to sample a certain color in the same region and then just paint over it. I'm going with this pinkish color for the insides of the mouth. Again, I'm mixing it up with other shades of gray and black. Okay, now let's texture paint the tongue. Select the tongue object, create a new material, and then create a new map. Rename the map and set the resolution to 5112 by 512. And you can uncheck alpha and give it a pinkish color. Press OK. Now in the shader editor, press Shift A, S, and image texture and then select the new texture that you created. Now plug the color into the base color of the material node and it's going to show up in the viewport. Now you can go ahead and paint on this object as well. Once you're done painting, go to image and save it out. Next we're going to do the same thing for the teeth. Select the teeth object in the outliner. You can isolate the object by pressing forward slash and now create a new texture. Call it teeth base color. And this can also be 512 by 512. Uncheck alpha and give it a gray color. Press OK. Now select the teeth texture in the UV layout and then start painting. I'm going to paint a dark shade on the lower side of the teeth. Once the painting is done, 
I'm going to go ahead and save it out as a PNG image. Now let's do the same thing for the eyes. Create a new texture, call it eye, and then 5112 by 5112 should be fine. And I'm going to select this brownish yellow color. Press OK to create the map. Now select the eye map in the UV section, and then you're ready to start painting. Now I don't want to be using a mask here, so I'll switch to the default brush. I will select a dark shade, and then darken it on the edges. I can decrease the strength of the brush and increase the radius and gently darken that part. To create the pupil, I'm going to increase the strength to 1 and just make a nice dark circle in the middle of the eyeball. After making a few more tweaks, I'll go ahead and save it out. Now let's bake out a diffuse map. So we'll create a new texture, set it to 4K. I've created a new image texture node in the shader editor and added the diffuse texture into it. And we can press bake. Once it's done baking, you can save out all the textures and then we can light our scene. So we create a floor plane and go into the material settings and give it a dark color. We'll also reduce the specular reflections. In the render tab, we're going to switch to GPU compute and turn on optics denoising. Select the plane and go into the object properties and under visibility, you can select shadow catcher. And now if you go into rendered view, press 5 on the number pad to get out of orthographic view and you should start to see your model rendered in front of the HDRI background. Let's change it to a different HDR image and see what our model is looking like. If you get back into the shader editor, you could actually create a roughness map for it by just duplicating the cavity map and the color ramp and plugging it into the roughness. And by adjusting the white and black points in the color ramp, you can actually control the roughness of the material. So what I've done is all the little crevices are rough and all the scales that are sticking out are shiny. Now let's get into the rendered view. You can see how quickly the image is getting denoised. We're getting almost real-time feedback. It's calculating all the textures, materials, and all that, and the lighting of the scene, and giving us something that is so close to final render. And this is basically because we've turned on optics denoising in the render settings. Make sure to experiment with different lighting scenarios and come up with interesting looks. I'm running NVIDIA's Dual Titan RTX GPUs on my machine. And when I rendered this scene in full HD, it only took about two seconds per frame. And this is true ray tracing, so it's a pretty big deal. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure to subscribe to NVIDIA Studio's YouTube channel and I'll see you in a future video.